would like to introduce you to our second founder, Nicholas Pigeon. It was Nicholas Pigeon and his grandson who turned Robert Hammond's dream of a school in Hampton into a reality. To make sense of how the pigeons helped, our story moves from Robert Hammond, who lived in the time of King Edward VI, to the Elizabethan period, and into the early 1600s, when James I of England was on the throne. Unfortunately, the school with seats in it, envisioned by Hammond, was no longer in session. It seemed that around 10 years after Hammond's will, the endowment and land he set aside for the school was taken back into the family and not used for school. Enter Mr. Nicholas Pigeon, a local man he followed in the footsteps of his father, Edmund. Edmund had worked as an officer in Elizabeth I's jewel house and then in her wardrobe. It seems that when Edmund retired, his son Nicholas took over. Perhaps he had been trained by his father. Nicholas worked for Elizabeth I as yeoman of Her Majesty's jewels and plates and later as clerk of the Queen's robes and wardrobe. This means he looked after the Queen's jewels and precious silver and pewter, laying it out for special occasions like the visit of a foreign monarch. As clerk of the Queen's robes, he would manage her wardrobe, overseeing the creation of new dresses, keeping others in fine condition and making sure she had the right clothes for every possible occasion. In 1584 and 1588, he appears in records for the royal court giving Queen Elizabeth jewels for Christmas. In 1612, Nicholas Pigeon bought land in Hampton, including the land where Hammond's first school was situated, next to St Mary's Church. At first, Pigeon didn't have any plans to re-establish the school. The local vicar, William Maidstone, was keen to ensure that the educational provision of Hampton Village continued an appeal was made regarding Hammond's will. In other words, even though Robert Hammond had requested his land should be used for a school, the school had not actually become a proper functioning school with seats in it, and the vicar wanted to make this happen. Nicholas Pigeon was brought before the commission, and it was explained to him that the land he had legally bought had previously been endowed by Hammond to be a school. Quite a surprise for Pigeon, I'm sure to be told off by a royal commission. However, in the words of historian Garside, Nicholas showed that he had a generous spirit and was a true friend of the idea of Hampton School. He agreed that his land should be used for the school and a decree made to re-establish Hampton School. A memorial was erected in 1612 in St Mary's Church to recognise the Pigeon family's contribution to the local community. Nicholas Pigeon lived another seven years to see Hampton School re-established. A century later, his grandson, another Edmund Pigeon, left more land next to the Bell Inn so that the school could continue and grow. We are not the first Hamptonians to recognise the important contribution and generosity shown by Nicholas and then Edmund Pigeon. The headmaster of Hampton School in 1900, a Mr W A Roberts, adopted the Pigeon arms and crest as those of the Hampton School, and in 1946, the Pigeon family's crest became the crest that Hamptonians wear on their blazer pockets and sports kits to this day.